The good news is that the Moderna and Pfizer mRNA vaccines are very similar and that they're both effective and safe. The efficacy of the Pfizer vaccine is 95%. The Moderna vaccine is at 94.5%. But on Tuesday, Moderna provided some additional info that their vaccine may reduce asymptomatic infections. And there isn't enough data to say for sure yet but when participants with no symptoms were swabbed between the first and second dose as part of surveillance testing, there were more positive cases in the placebo group than in the group that had received just one dose of the vaccine. So it may be that the vaccine not only protects against disease, but against uh, infection. And Pfizer is predicted to have data on something similar in January. Well, that's that's amazing. I mean, and it's we followed the vaccines the last couple of days down in Louisiana and Texas, Pat Minion, of course, keeping the Pfizer vaccine at negative 80, negative 90 degrees Celsius was absolutely critical. Moderna doesn't need those kind of ultra cold temperatures. Why not? What's the difference between those two when it comes to temperatures? Yeah, that's right. So both vaccines use messenger RNA or mRNA to provide instructions for our cells to make that spike protein of the virus, which our bodies then mount an immune response against. Both companies use lipid nanoparticles to stabilize that mRNA and help it get into cells, but each company has their own proprietary lipid nanoparticle formulation made with slightly different ingredients. And this leads to that difference in the stability of the vaccines and therefore the storage temperatures required. I'm not going to pretend I understood half of that, Pad Mini, but I do understand. I can look at a refrigerator and freezer and say, okay, that's the temperature there. And, you know, you think about the difference. We say, okay, who cares? It matters a lot. I mean, keeping something at negative 80 degrees Celsius, trust me, I put my hand in the freezer for two seconds. It was very cold. It's going to be easier, I think, every step of the way for the Moderna vaccine. Yeah, and well, so the Pfizer vaccine ships with larger a larger number of doses, um, and so with that at, with those added temperature requirements, it's likely that more densely populated areas and facilities with those specialized freezers will acquire the Pfizer vaccine, while the Moderna vaccine could be used in less densely populated areas that may not have this ultra cold storage. But even hospitals that are in less populated areas are investing in those cold freezers, so they won't miss out on any vaccines. Yeah, well, they're made by Thermo Fisher. We saw some of them, but they cost $20,000 and up, by the way. Very quickly, uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine, assuming it is approved, and, and I don't want you to go too far in the weeds, Pat Mini. I understand it's a more traditional vaccine. A lot of insiders I've talked to have said, sort of whisper to me, they would rather use that one because it's sort of a, a, a more established vaccine technology, if you will. How do you define the difference between AstraZeneca and Moderna Pfizer's mRNA? So the AstraZeneca vaccine is, it uses a viral vector, and that is, that is more traditional. But thus far, all the data that we've seen with both the Moderna vaccine and the Pfizer vaccine are great in terms of safety and efficacy. And for me, I'm going to take whatever vaccine is offered to me uh, as soon as it's offered to me. <laughs> Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.